What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the timeline panel and we're gonna go over all the features you need to know to get started with your editing process. Now let's get started. So we're gonna focus on the timeline panel in this video and you'll notice there's a blue kind of uh, outline of this is the timeline panel itself. In the last video, we went over the project panel and we're gonna take some items from here and add it to the timeline to start the process. So right now we need a sequence inside the timeline to be able to edit. So we need settings of what type we want the sequence. If we want it to be high def, 4K, whatever it may be, you get the settings to create the project you want it to be. And you can see here, it says drop a media here to create sequence. So that's the first thing we need to do to get started. So there's a couple different ways we can go about it. If you want to start a sequence, you can come down here and click on new item and go up to sequence and start the sequence that way. Here to the left, we have sequence presets. So you can go through and these are presets, depending on the camera and the media they're importing, you can start off that. Or if you want to customize it, you can come over to settings and specifically manually put it in if you like. Now let's just say we do this. Say we go to settings and we have this, which is standard high def at 24 frames per second. And we'll just click OK. So now we've created a sequence that's standard high def with 24 frames per second. So a couple things, if we go to drag and drop a media, our very first item, so you'll see here it says 3840 by 2160 and 24 frames a second. So that's 4K. So if I drag, and drop in the timeline. We can do that, but because we started the sequence at regular high def, it's now gonna ask me, this clip does not match the sequence settings. Change sequence to match the clip settings. So do we wanna change the sequence here to match the clip itself? If you wanna keep it at the regular high def that we created the sequence, you say no. Keep existing settings in the sequence we just claimed. But say you didn't want that and you actually want it to be 4K going forward, you can say change sequence settings. So once I click change, it now has changed the sequence inside of the timeline to match this video settings. So now if I grab the same video again and drag and drop it over here, it's not gonna ask me anything because the sequence was already changed going forward. So every clip going forward will be at that sequence. Okay, so we'll head over here. We'll kind of start with the basics here. All these numbers here, this is actually where your playhead is. It's telling you where you are in your project. So the 06 is the frames per second. So this has 24 frames per second. Once you hit 24 frames, you'll see me slide over. You'll see me slide over slowly and you'll see the frames jumping up. But once I hit 24, it's going to add to the next number. So then went 24 frames per second and then it added a second here. And as we go, you'll see those numbers go up. So those are seconds. So this is 14 seconds, minutes, hours. As you move along, that's where it is in the timeline. Another thing you'll notice here, there's a little magnet, it's called snap in timeline. This helps if you notice here when I put this in, it brings it and it automatically just snaps it together. And I bring it in, it'll snap it to place. So it takes a guesswork out of aligning it. If that's unchecked by either clicking it here or clicking S on the keyboard shortcut, it'll turn to white and no longer be blue. So now if that same thing, if I drag it over and if I bring it in, it doesn't snap. So you can easily just slide it to and from. Now this is necessary if you're trying to fine tune something specifically. As a general rule, just for putting uh, clips together, the snapping is very helpful. So I'm gonna turn that back on. And then this link selection. So a lot of times if I have, I have the video and the audio and they are linked together. Say I wanna slide the audio over or vice versa, separate the video. We can highlight this, come over here and click link selection, which means unlink it. And then now when I move it over, I can move it out of place. But now you'll notice one thing, there's a warning here. This is saying that you're so many frames and seconds past the connection of this. So if we bring it back over, that number now is only nine seconds and 12 frames. If we move it over here, it matches up. And as soon as it matches up, it's saying it's exactly linked up. So now that discrepancy goes away. So I'm gonna go again and move it over. And then now it's saying it's four seconds and 22 frames off slid to the right. You'll see here's a plus symbol and here's a left. So it's meaning it's minus away from the top. And the plus means the video itself is that much further to the right. I'm going to redo that. And then I'm going to highlight these and then I'm going to click link selection and it'll relink them. So now if I move it, they move together. And then markers in the playhead, you can add markers. So if you're wanting to do something where it's kind of like a breadcrumb where you're going along in your edits and it's a reference point, like, okay, I need to come back here and I need to create a, a text template or right here. I'm gonna click a marker because I need to do an effect or here, I'm gonna click another one. So this way I can just continue to edit without worrying about, oh, I need to put an effect here. Oh, I need to put text. You put the scenes together, the clips together, and then later you come back to these markers to say, okay, right here, I need to have this effect. Right here, I need to have the title opening or whatever it may be. And then we'll come over here to this little wrench icon. If you click the wrench icon, it gives you a ton of different things. I'm not gonna go over each one of these, but it's definitely good to play around with this. So show video keyframes, for example. This is where you can put a line in there and add keyframes to dim it or do different things like that. Um, show video names if you want that. Show the audio waveforms. A bunch of different things you can play with. I'll maybe do a later video specifically for this wrench icon. So now let's come here down here at the bottom. These are all tracks. So we have the center line here, which is the middle. Everything above it is an audio track, which you'll see here it says V, so video one track, here video two track, here video three track. And the same thing below, it's audio, audio one, audio two, audio three. 
Now the audio one would probably be dialogue associated with the video. Maybe on audio two, you can have music for like the background music, ambiance, soundtrack, that sort of thing. And then on three, you could do various effects, swooshes, that sort of thing. Now, once you get your timeline filled up with a bunch of different items, you might want to lock certain things or not have them active. So if you're trying to work on cleaning up the dialogue, you don't want to have some track down here that has audio or music playing in the background. So you could highlight this and come over here and say you want to mute this track. So it's going to mute everything on this track, but still play the music on this and the sound effects. If you want to mute the other two, the sound effects and the music, you can undo this and only hear the dialogue. Now on the flip side, if you want to just solo so you only hear this, it'll do that and isolate that one track. If you also want to lock a track, say you're coming down here and you have all the audio or something down below, you can mute it also and then lock it. So no matter what, if I come and edit here and say I chop this up and I delete it, it's not gonna chop the audio or whatever tracks that I've locked, it won't cut those. It'll be non-destructive. So you can do whatever you need and they're gonna be protected. You can add in the new clip here you want and still have the timing of everything else linked up here in the audio section. I'm gonna undo that. And if you wanna add more tracks, it's very easy. Just right mouse click, add a track and vice versa. If you wanna delete track, right mouse click, and delete track. You can also grab these by the little handles and move them larger or smaller. And same thing with the middle, you can bring it up here, say you wanna work with more audio, need more room for that, or vice versa. Now at the bottom, there's these little handles too that you can stretch out if you wanna be closer to see more detail. You can also just hit the keyboard shortcut plus and minus, so plus will bring it up, minus will bring it down. Now if you wanna see all of your clips in here, say you're really close and you wanna pull out and see everything in your timeline as a whole, click the backspace button, which is underneath the delete button in the keyboard, and it automatically jumps and shows you everything in the timeline. Now if you wanna go back to that specific jump, you can click backspace again, and it'll take you back into that same distance that was zoomed in prior. So I'm gonna pull that back out, and then I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. Now the toolbar, which is here to the left, I'll make another video explaining all the different tools and what they're used for in a future video. But this video is to kind of get people familiar with the layout, kind of know what specific buttons are here, the order, the features here, and the numbers and the timeline, just to get you familiar with how to kind of maneuver back and forth. And another thing too, like I've clicked these here, I'm gonna undo the other two. And I'll do a separate video on this also, when you import video for say, we come up here and we wanna import this video, I'm gonna drag it down here. Now, if I have the V1 here, video one, if I do a shortcut import from here, which is just right here, insert or overwrite, I'm gonna click insert. You're gonna notice one thing. Because I clicked this here, I'm saying on import, I want the video to be imported here directly. That's when we're there. And you can see the difference this stayed here because this is clicked. I'm gonna undo that. Now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna come down here and click the bottom and move the video back to video one. Now if I do the exact same thing and click insert here, which is inserting this video here into the timeline, You'll notice because we moved the, this button down here, we're indicating on import, we're indicating that we want the audio to be down here, which separated it, and we want the video to be up in here. I'm gonna undo that. One more thing on the audio tracks, this little microphone, if you click it, wherever the audio track is, it'll give you a little countdown and you can add audio. So if you wanna do a voiceover in a specific section, and I wanna put it on this track. If I click voiceover record, it'll give me a timer. Wherever I leave the playhead, it's gonna leave an indicator and give me a countdown, two, three, one. I'm gonna start my voiceover and it's gonna record live what I say in the voiceover and then click stop and I'll have a voiceover track right there. And one more thing, down here over in the project panel, after we started the sequence, this is a sequence image. We can tell it kind of looks like the timeline with all the different items inside of it. And it's different from like the audio sounds waves and the film strip here. You can come down here and you can edit this as far as naming it. You can see right now it's just sequence four because it's by default, but I'm just gonna say main movie. And once I click off it, it's then gonna change here, main movie. And because up here in the program monitor, we're playing where the playhead is here. It's also changed saying we're watching the main movie because we titled it the main movie in our sequence build. Well, that is a very basic overview of the timeline and all the basic features you need to know to get you started with your editing journey inside of Premiere Pro. Thank you for taking the time to watch and we'll catch you next time. Later.